Welcome to this lesson. In our previous lesson, we looked at the seven fundamental units or quantities and the instruments used to measure them. In this lesson, we are going to look at the derived quantities and their instruments. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify other quantities besides the fundamental quantities and the instruments used to measure them. You should also be able to identify the SI units and symbols of some derived quantities. The first quantity we'll be looking at here is volume. The unit for measuring volume is a cubic meter. The symbol is meter cube. So we have volume like this. And largely, when you have a cube, we want to measure the volume of the cube. Then we look at the three main sides. So first off, we look at the side here, which is one part. So we call that the first M. The side down here, which is the other part, the other M. And then the side that goes this side, this is also another M. Because there are these three M's, we multiply the M by three, then we have M raised to the power three of a sort, but because each of them length is measured in meter, meter, we are, mul we are multiplying the meter by three, and that's how come we have the meter cube. If the same thing was a cuboid, then we would be using the height, we'll be using the length and the breadth. So that would be H, B, and L. And because each of them are also measured in meter, we'll still end up with meter cube as the unit. The subunit is the cubic centimeter. That is if the unit of measuring that is in centimeters, and that will be centimeters cube or cubic centimeter. The instruments for measuring volume, the measuring cylinder. We could also use the pipette for measuring the volume of small um, uh, quantities of liquids. Next is atmospheric pressure. If we want to measure the atmospheric pressure, it is the unit for measuring that is Pascal. And the symbol is PA. The P is capital and the A is small letters. So under no circumstance should you write the unit for the pressure as small P, small A, or capital P, capital A. These two are wrong. Correct one is capital P and small a. The instrument for measuring atmospheric pressure, we have the barometer. And this here is the aneroid barometer. Next is electric potential. And we measure that in using the unit volt. The symbol is a capital V, and the subunit is the millivolt, small m, capital V. The instrument for measuring the volt is the voltmeter, similar in appearance to the ammeter. And of course, this one also measures the electronic potential or the potential difference between two points across a conductor. And when we have two um, outlets that measure the potential difference across the two points, between the two points across the conductor in the readings are seen on the image, on the front of the voltmeter as we have it in this image. Now, there are a number of other derived units that do not necessarily have instruments used to measure them, but they also have their own symbols and sub-units, or units as we know them. So it ranges from um, the meter as we know it, displacement or distance, and the unit is meter, area, we, use, we look at um, the meter square, that is m times 2. So when we have a rectangle, for example, we are asked to find the area. Then we are looking at the length times the breadth. So the L times B is what gives us meter squared because we are multiplying the meter by itself. Then we have the volume, that is meter cube. And we can come to some other ones like the force, which is measured in newtons. We have work and energy measured in joules, we have power measured in watt, and the rest as we have them in the image. Now, assignment. 
what is the SI unit and symbol of the following derived units? Electric potential, electric resistance, and quantity of electricity. Discuss that and um, let's take that as we move along in the lessons. Now, in this lesson, we looked at a number of derived units besides the seven fundamental quantities that we saw. So some of the derived units we saw in the instruments measuring them are volume. We use the pipette for small quantities and the measuring cylinder if the, liquid, the quantity of liquid is large. We've seen atmospheric pressure. We've seen the electric potential. In our next lesson, we'll continue our discussion on measurements. See you in the next lesson.